welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play it like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics yet to come. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, hit me up in the comments. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss, also hit me up in the comments. Today's topic we're going over is disrespectful kids and the parents not being held accountable. Here on Wizzo Talk, I guess, do their own intro. They'll let you know a little bit about themselves, and then uh, we're going to get this discussion started. Hello, everyone. I'm Kathy. I have two sunshines, so I'm a mother of two, ages 22 and 15. Hello, everybody. My name is George Allen. I am a Temple native. I have a master's degree in clinical psychology with a minor in early childhood ed education. Hello everyone, I'm Joshua, AKA Seven Points of Bliss. Um, my brand is called After Real Truth and it's all about finding yourself through your truth and just spreading bliss. All right, all right. I'd like to welcome all my guests on the show. Guys, thank y'all for coming out to talk about this, this topic and have a little discussion on this topic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just read off a few of my questions from my Google search, cause they say Google knows everything, but <laughs> we don't know if it's right or true. I'm going to read that off, a little bit of what I've got. If we touch on some of that, that'll be fine. If not, then we're going to come back to you, George, and you're going to go and take it away, and we're going to feed off of you, and we're going to make it do what it do here on Wizzo Talk. So just some questions that I asked Google, and I did not put in a specific age when I asked it. I just asked a question. And one of the questions that I asked, should parents be blamed for their child's behavior? Of course, Google says, Parents should not be blamed, should not be held responsible or be punished for their child's crime because the decision to do that was solely based upon the child. Next question that I asked Google, uh, talked about uh, disrespectful behavior of children come down to knowing kids having not known, kids having, sorry, kids having poor problem solving skills and lack of knowledge about how to be more respectful as they pull away. And one of my last ones I have, disrespectful behavior in children usually occurs because they haven't yet learned <coughs> how to solve problems or express frustration in a mature and healthy way. So that's just a little bit of something that we got going, but uh, George, what you got for us right now? Well, uh, I'm gonna start off, it's not gonna be uh, long, it's just gonna be short. So today's subject is, is, is controversial yet it's, uh, it's, it's disturbing. Um, I think it's the sheer apathy of the parents of, of why the children are acting out and, and they can't be disciplined. When we have our school system and kids are in the school system and they're fighting the teachers and they're disrespectful to the teachers, I think that's a major, major concern, major concern. And I grew up in a time where the saying, it took a village, it took a village. I mean, if I did something, I would get in trouble with my mom, the neighbors, you know, my auntie, whoever it was, I was in, you know, where I was at, that's where I would get in trouble with. Nowadays, I see children, I mean, children and parents, the parents are not he he uh, holding their uh, kids uh, accountable for any of the actions that they do, and it's crazy. So, and not to get off topic, but we live in a time also where us as black people, especially us black men, we have to be held accountable when we're out in public. Mm -hmm. Not just for, for sheer safety. You know, we can't be acting a fool when we get stopped at a traffic stop and, 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 and want to talk crazy to the police officers. But that's, that's another subject. But right. uh, that's all I have at this right. time, anybody right. else? Well, just to say that uh, we can veer either way we have to go. The topic is disrespectful children and their parents not being held accountable. But if you have something to from that that's fine so we can just go ahead on like even when we was talking about with the cops or whatever that's still something a point where a parent may have to raise the kid train the kid or, or whatever so exactly. just to kind of to be clear we can we can drift and flow and feed off one another there's no script so we're just gonna roll with it so okay. feel comfortable anybody jump in anything you may have to say and I agree with what you said with what you said um, I grew up the same way um, but now it's totally different you're most of the kids and they know that their parents are gonna back them up and they're, they don't want anybody saying anything to their kids. 
Um, and it is the parent's responsibility. You need to take responsibility earlier on or later on, but at some point you, you have to take responsibility. Okay, Josh, you want to add? Josh, and um, just to add on to what you guys are saying, I, I definitely feel that it's multiple generations of trauma that mm -hmm. have taken place. And when it comes to accountability, nobody wants to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And when they look at their children, they see uh, a form of themselves, but they also see the things that they went through. Like I hear a lot of people saying, oh, well, I was, I got whooped as a child, mm -hmm. so I don't want to be able to do that to my child. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's kind of like, um, it's valuable things that are being taken out. And I'm not saying that every child needs to be disciplined that way. But right. Some children, they need that type of structure. And when they've taken the masculine male energy out of the household mm -hmm. and they've taken the um, elders out of the household, that takes away a lot from what the children are being able to take in and digest. Right. Okay. So how do we hold the kid, the parent accountable if the kid is in school uh, fighting or whatever something? So how do we hold the parents accountable? You can't really hold the, the parent accountable because it's, it's going to be some type of uh, altercation. It's going to be some type of, 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 of very bad disagreement that's going to go another way. You can, you can't you, you really can't talk to uh, parents that that have uh, unruly children because, like she said, they're going they're going to stand behind their children. You really can't talk to them because I've I've come across uh, uh, a lot of children. That I'm, I'm, I don't want to call any kid bad because I just think that's just a, a bad way to uh, a terrible way to describe a child. I just want to say the parenting is, is not correct. Uh, you know, you only you, you only know what you know from uh, how you you know what environment you come up from. So if there's no structure in the household, there's going to be no structure anywhere else. You see, so and and it's sad that we really have to walk on eggshells. Around children, I heard I heard a child say, and it really disturbed me. She said that grown-ups and adults don't deserve my respect. That's what a child said. That's what a child said. And I was like, and I just had to. I looked. I, I said, I, I would never in a million years at, at that age would have said that. So it's really like you said, generational issues. Mm -hmm. Because if you would have said that back in the day to your grandma or somebody, your, your face would have been halfway across the room. Correct. <laughs> Anybody have anything else to kind of touch on? Or? Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely it's definitely to the point where it's like people really need to start to reflect in on themselves and see that um, school is not going to teach your child everything. Mm -hmm. The first place you're going to learn anything from is home. And in a way, we're all computers, like organic computers, and we learn the most critical things our first few years on this planet, mm -hmm. right? And when we're taking in things, a lot of people don't understand that they still see themselves as children. Right. So they still, they carry themselves as children. And it goes back to that saying, we now we have children raising children. Mm -hmm. And I think people really get the concept of maturity confused with age mm -hmm. because you can truly be an elder and still be very immature. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. People think maturity comes along with paying bills and all that, but mm -hmm. that's not the structure of what maturity actually is. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of stuff that I feel like society is very confused with. Because we don't look at those things that the elders were giving us in the past, right. you know, those gems, you know what I'm saying? Like, we right. don't see that anymore. And it's like a lot of the elders these days are all complacent and they're in a place of immaturity as well. Because we live in a very uh, immature society. Mm -hmm. Everything about our society is about selfishness mm -hmm. and being about self. And like, like he said, like, it takes a village to raise a child, but... It also, you know, within that village, everybody has to not be a child themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. When when you're at home, whatever is allowed at home is what you feel like is allowed when you're out. So if you're at school and if you're being disrespectful at home, if you're allowed to do that or if, if that's what you see, you're modeling what you see. And that's why a lot of kids act that way because it's allowed at home. They're not... Um, they're not made to be respectful or they're listening to adult conversations. We weren't allowed to do that. No, we definitely weren't allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then as far as elders and, you know, the whole concept of um, it taking a village, nowadays you don't want to say anything to anybody else's child. 
for, out of fear. So. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, one of my coworkers at work was talking to me about um, uh, now that parents kind of fear disciplining their child with a switch or with a belt from CPS or the cops mm-hmm. coming over or something like that, you know. But back then, some of us had to go pull our own switch exactly. to get a whooping bar exactly. or get a belt or you know whatever. Right. But now some parents have been they been known to take it too far. Yeah. With the the switch or the belt, and the kid is beat all up because if the kid has one weapon on him or something and goes to school, and the teacher sees it, she's calling CPS or whoever because she probably feels that if she don't, then she's gonna be held accountable for not saying anything about this kid having a whip on him. And then so now the parents are sitting back like, well, did I whoop his butt or not? Exactly. And you may have some parents that say, well, if the cops come over here, well, then shit, you go with them. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I'm going to whoop your ass around here, and you're going to learn to do what I say. And exactly. when I say it, if not, then you tell them, y'all just keep, y'all just take the ass on and, and go and raise them. And to reiterate what he said, uh, the male component has left the household. That it's really not a presence, a presence there in in, in, in a lot of households. So I was uh, going to pay a bill one day, and right over here by this McDonald's, and there was a car on the side of the road, and this young man and this young lady were just sitting there with their hazards on. And I was like, okay, let me go check and see what's going on. And it was a black couple. So he was sitting there, and he was just. Uh, just sitting there with his with his with his wife or his girlfriend, and I got out the car there. I said, "What's wrong?" He said, "My tires on flat." And I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and I said, "Do you know how to change the tire?" He said, "No." Mm-hmm. Now he had to be every bit of twenty five or twenty six. Yeah. And I said, uh, "Young man, there's a spare in the trunk." I said, "You take the spare out and you take the jack and you change the tire." You don't know how to? He said, "No." So, to to go off that. When I was growing up, my dad told me I'd change tires, change oil, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 brakes, right. anything to do, manly stuff, you know, right. molding on, you know what I'm saying, just stuff to do like a young man should. These young men today, half of them don't know how to do anything, anything, and that just, it teased me off. I mean, nothing, and, and you have the, the mothers in the house, they don't take out the trash, they don't wash dishes, they don't clean up, they don't fold the clothes, mm-hmm. they don't know how to do anything. So it, it is the parenting, and it, it is that the male component has left, and, it, and it's crazy. I don't know even know how we got to this, right. you know. <clears throat> how do we how do we come to this all of a sudden? I, I don't understand. It's right. just it's just crazy. Yeah, I, I really think that um, it stems from the attitude that people have, and it, and it really starts with the parents. It, it comes from this attitude as to where I'm perfect how I am. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no growth. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you always stay in that place is where I'm good how I am right now, it's like, I, when I hear people say that, I try to tell them, like, if you thought that way when you were a baby, you would never be walking. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? And right. it's like, people don't think like that, and people don't want to be wrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And to add on to what you were saying, like, when I was a child, my dad showed me how to cut the grass. He showed me how to change a tire. My grandfather showed me how to build things. Yes. My grandma taught me how to cook. And exactly. it's like every in every facet of the family, it was the child was pulled to the side and taught things. Mm-hmm. And now it's like it's not like that. Like we couldn't run in and out of the house. Exactly. If I came in the house, I could not go into the refrigerator. Now yeah. these kids do anything, and it's like it's true. Social Facts. media is truly feeding them an illusion. Right. Facts. And their parents too. It's like everybody's just being fed this illusion. Yeah. Right. Do you think now? I heard you say that um, the the man, the man. But so you think that a woman can raise the child by herself? Now she may can't teach him to change the oil and do all that stuff now. But uh, you think that a woman is, is the only parent can raise the child by herself? Yeah, now? a woman can raise a child by herself. It's, it's a lot of single mothers that have raised good. I mean, good children, they've, and they became great adults. You know, a, a lot of NFL players are NFL. They were raised by single mothers. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it just wasn't the mothers. It was the coaches. Mm-hmm. It was the teachers. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. You, you know, p- the, some of the kids are so disrespectful. But do you see – I've, n- I've never seen any of the football players on the high school football team. They're so polite. They're so respectful. You really never hear about them getting in trouble because, you know, they have the coaches in their life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And those coaches are a big part in investing, the, investing in them and showing them how to live, not just football, but as a man, as a person, how, you know, how to go through life and navigate through life without all the, the messiness and all the junk. So I don't know how we would fix it. You know, do we, do we have coaches, you know, teach? And I, I know some coaches that teach, but it, it seems like it doesn't hit every child. You know, some some kids from a some kids come from a very 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 bad, you know, yeah. situation, and they play sports, but they don't grow up to be, you know, like their environment. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know how to fix it. Right. Right. So my dad didn't have the luxury of having boys, mm -hmm. <laughs> he had girls, um, but he did teach us all the same things: how to change a flat. But I probably would have sat in the car and just called somebody because mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. <laughs> But I do feel like um, that a male role in whether it's a male or female life is important. Even if that male is not in the household, like you said, there are teachers that are willing, um, coaches and you know people at church and um, other organizations and um, neighbors. Mm -hmm. But of course, that has a lot to do with the child too. Is yeah. that child open and accepting? Right. Yeah. The help yeah. and the guidance. Yeah. 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 Cause, and that's and the things that you're naming and the people you're naming, to me, that sound like it's part of the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. gone. They mm -hmm. just needed to raise exactly. the child or whatever. And uh, just to read two more of my notes uh, from my Google search, I asked Google, what age are the kids the hardest to deal with? And Google says age eight, according to over 2,000 parents surveyed in 2020, that an eight year old is one of the hardest ones to deal with. And then also it says, uh, I asked what age are kids the meanest and it's pointing to middle school. Mm -hmm. that that's where the kids are the meanest. Definitely agree with that. You agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I agree with the middle school um, being the meanest. The eight kind of surprised me. I was <laughs> yeah, going to say too. teenage years. Teenage, right. yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, definitely middle school being the meanest because it's that transition from elementary exactly. school, I'm almost grown type right. thing. So. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, right. experimenting with different things, and, and mm -hmm. yes, your body is your body is uh, is going through changes. Of course, that's when puberty really hits. But yeah, middle school for me was uh, <laughs> picked on, you know what I'm saying, and everything. Right. But that, but that everybody got that, you know right. what I'm saying. Everybody went through that. But middle school definitely is a transitional stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I, I I definitely agree with the middle school. Right. So how do we hold the parent accountable if the child is doing whatever he's doing in school or whatever, how do we hold, we're talking about, you know, how disrespectful the kids are, but that's just the topic we can veer from it, like I said, but how do we hold, what are some thoughts or suggestions on how to hold that parent can, accountable? And we already said now, some of the parents you can't even talk to because they feel that their kid is not wrong and they backing their kid, but it's got to be something, this kid is getting in trouble repeatedly, so how do we hold the parent accountable or who do we hold accountable? really have to be the parent I mean, because if you think about it in those situations and what you call the parent uh, if you actually pay attention to the parent interaction with the child you will see that that child is just a smaller version of that parent that's, exactly. why, they, that's why they feel like the child did no wrong because they've taught them those actions okay. yeah. so they're literally mimicking what they've already seen so I mean the parents have no choice but to be held accountable but it's kind of hard to get them to reflect in on themselves if they see that they do no wrong Exactly, exactly. How how do you, but yeah, exactly. But how, how do you hold the parents accountable? And and that's the, that that is the, that, that's the question. So, my thoughts, and it, it might be a little smug or, or mean, but my thoughts, if if you can't control your child, and your child doesn't want to learn, your child is disruptive, and your child is just just out of hand. I mean, take them out of school, you know, leave them at home. If you don't want to learn, he's disrupting everybody. You you deal with it. You know, right. you deal with them. Let them stay at home, and you deal with that. Right. If not, then either the state's going to get involved, which, which is always a bad case. Uh, authorities are getting involved, which is always a bad case. So let the parent deal with it, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Now, when you say leave them at home, that's something that they really can't do. That, yeah. Because, you know, they, they have to work or whatever. But how do we – the kid is a teenager or – Maybe if he's 10 or whatever, he can't stay at home by himself. So, and then I think after they miss so many days 
uh, I forgot what it is. I think they're the school will come send an officer or something like that. I, I don't right. know. I'm yeah. way out of touch with all that now. Yeah, so, yeah. But so you can't. Joshua, you about to go and you got to come in on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just think it's a, it's a lack of creativity because there's a lot of uh, conflicting systems that allow the kids to act the way they do. And it allows the parents just to be nonchalant about it. I mean, you could definitely leave the kids at home, but if you pay attention to like the last few years and when COVID mm-hmm. cracked down, right. the, a lot of parents were hurting their children right. because mm. they were tired of how they were acting. You know what right. I'm saying? They like right. they were ready for the kids to go back to school, exactly. and you can really see in their mentality that they think that school is a babysitting program. Right. They don't look at it as a place of education. Exactly. So I feel like if you're gonna do that, then if you're gonna send an officer or something to the person's house because that child hasn't been going to school, then you should be able to send them some type of counselor that'll be able to school them and teach them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Or the kids were on the computer going to school, so if you right. wanna leave them at home, they might as well go to school off the computer. Now, right. I mean, technology is a lot better now. So right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. I think that's part of it. Some of the parents don't know how to handle the kid. So when the kid is acting up acting up at school or acting out, they don't know what to do, why the kid is doing it. Exactly. Usually it's an underlying issue, um, and some parents just don't know how to deal with it, or they don't have time to, to, to deal with it because they're working or um, their time is devoted to, to something else. But exactly. I think maybe... Um, more resources for parents on parenting if they would <coughs> be accepting and participate. Exactly. Because, like, if the child isn't going to school, um, yeah, at that time, you do have to take responsibility because they're not at school, the parent does get in trouble for that. Mm. Right, 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 right. It all kind of goes back to also to uh, the parent. Uh, I just had my thought and shit. It just slipped my damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> it just slipped my mind. But what I, I, maybe it'll come back to me. Uh, but what I'll touch on this right here. So, because this here is, is a problem also. So, any thoughts on the six year old that allegedly shot this teacher, I don't know, in the face or whatever? I mean, how do we hold that parent accountable? Should that parent be held accountable? I mean, the kid is six years old with a gun in school and he shoots this teacher. I don't know if you guys have heard about that. So what happens to the six-year-old kid? There was one other incident a while back, and I can't remember, but uh, some guy went on a shooting spree, and they they was holding his parents accountable because I think they went and purchased a gun. But my question is, you have a six-year-old kid that had the gun in school. Who are we holding accountable? Should that kid go to jail? That lady shot. Any thoughts? You can't. You have to hold the parents accountable. The child can't go to jail because apparently he's six. He can be put in the in the system. Okay. But again, that goes to what you see at home. Goes to what you do in public. And social media raises our children. He say. Right. So they only th- they only know what they see. You know, if they see killing on social media. Or, or, or on the game that they're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's what they're going to emulate. You see, so it, that that is a very tragic situation that, you know, that that child, that baby shot an adult. Why would he even have access to a gun to take to school? That's my thing. How, how did it even happen? You know, and to be, to be, to be able to pull the trigger at six? Right. Oh, my God. Right. Was it was the gun already loaded, or did he load it himself? That's that's a lot yeah. of man. That, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, if you look at, if you, I don't know if you guys ever played Call of Duty, but these games are just they simulations, and sim, those simulations are nothing but training. They exactly. even back in the days they were using stuff like that to train soldiers and stuff like that, and flying school and all that. Right. So it's like when you study watching that repetitively and you're doing it and you're going through the motions, the eyes when you're looking at anything the mind doesn't uh distinguish whether or not you're just watching you're you're ex- like you're existing in that right so but for me i have never played call of duty i'm not a video game junkie but okay. a gun i don't care how much you watch it you just wouldn't know how to and depend on the type of gun how, do you have the strength mm-hmm. and if it wasn't loaded how do you know how to load it Oh, like in real aim. life, like in real life, right. and, and his aim and mm-hmm. everything, like yeah. he had to have seen that. Yeah, he yeah. saw somebody do it or yeah. somebody taught him to do it or somebody yeah, let him shoot to. a gun before. Right. 
that's the only that's the only way that could have happened. That's mm-hmm. just so crazy. It, it is you, very interesting though. That my uh, I think during that time of my grandson was probably seven when we went to a gun show in Bell County. I didn't know what the hell some of them guns were, but he knew all of them. Yeah, I'm telling you, Papa, that's this, that's that, and it's because of Call of Duty, is Call of Duty, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They show you how to load it, hold it, yeah. oh, uh, wow. go prone, laying on the ground. They show mm-hmm. you how to do everything yeah. on the game because it's from first person perspective. So all you see is the gun right. in the hand. Right. Mm-hmm. Then they have modes as to where you uh, like you modify the gun, so you learn oh, yeah. everything about the gun. So <laughs> what we say. If this six-year-old kid or 10-year-old kid, he don't have money to go buy that. Right. Right. So we're yeah. saying that the parents are responsible because exactly. they purchased exactly. that game for him. Exactly. And now that's then taught him how to and shoot that gun. they have restrictions on those guns as well. Right, but I'm sure they probably can get around those age oh, restrictions. Oh, definitely their parents buy it. Yeah, yeah. parents you know, buy it. And they can buy it because we all know, and, and I have to say my, my son's probably going to watch this too, but my granddaughter was probably – three or whatever with a phone already and I see it when I go in the store because the parents know that that'll keep them quiet mm-hmm. and they're playing on their phone they listen to games so they know more about the phone yeah then a lot because we giving them that technology to keep them quiet when most of us was coming up it was outside you wanted some water to drink you drink out that damn water, water. water. <laughs> exactly. and, and don't be running in now drink out that let it run for a second it'll cool off yeah. you know but you know so we saying that that six year old can't go to jail, so does that mean he goes to a um, juvenile detention center? I don't even know if he's old enough to go to that. I don't he's know. Not, he's not. So at six years old, he just got to deal with, and we don't even know if it really affects him or not. No. Mentally or, or whatever, because he's pulled the trigger and, you know, there's blood. There's other students in the room, and the kid, the teacher, I'm sure she hit the ground. Yeah. You know, so what happens with this parent? Any thoughts? They should be. They, they should. They should definitely be. Go to jail, definitely. To allow that child to take that gun to school, or, or even though they didn't know, they should. I mean, when you get up in the morning and your children go to school, you make sure you check them. Check their book bags. Mm-hmm. You pack their lunch if they taking lunch. You make sure your child is right before they go out that door. Yeah. So that parent had, was not doing their job. Of course, that's just pure, insane negligence on the parent. To allow that child to take a a, a a loaded gun to school and to kill another human being that that's just negligence on the parents. So yeah, they should they should definitely be held accountable for it. Right. No ifs ands or buts. Because at some point that kid know or seen that gun in the house mm-hmm. is wasn't a lock on it. I'm assuming exactly. it wasn't in a locked box or whatever or something like that. But you know everybody now. Is there's more people with concealed handguns and yeah. more people carrying and buying guns now, but if you look now, there's there's more. I mean, when we were coming up, shit, I don't even think I remember no shooting in school or nothing. No, I no. I thought we just fought no. it out with our fists. No, but yeah. now kids are not wanting to do that because they don't want to get their butt whooped. Cause it's easier to pull that trigger. Yeah. And then worry about getting caught or going to jail later or something. Yeah, it so, wasn't no school shootings. Definitely no. wasn't no school. But shootings. But now it's getting no. more and more common. Mm-hmm. So, but how do we? You know, I mean, we, we probably can't stop it, I guess, unless more parents become responsible uh, to secure their weapon. But if this is a teenager, I mean, he's going to get around that and find that. And so. some people are brought up around guns because of people in their family that hunt, yeah. Yeah. Um, go to the shooting range, things like that. But it should have been in a secure location um, so the child didn't have access to access to it and then additionally with the child why didn't the child come to the parent and say I have a problem with this teacher right. why did the child feel at six years old that they needed to take this into their own hands right. Right. Mm. I think a, a good thing for them to start doing is that when, when the people are pregnant as far as like the couples and stuff like that they should probably give them some type of a counseling classes on how to uh, notice certain type of emotional distress in their children mm-hmm. or teach them basic psychology because you sh- you should know that as a parent you know what right. I mean like even like when I talk to my daughter I tell her like you know my job as a parent is to make sure you don't go through the same things I've been through right. and she asks me like what about the stuff that I'm gonna go through that you haven't been uh, that that you, that you haven't been through and I'm like well I'm supposed to help you through that mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying because this is our journey together and a lot of people they don't 
they a lot of people push their own emotions to the side. Mm -hmm. So you can only imagine what they'd be doing to their children. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? And then all this like uh, fast paced society, it's like they just zip and go. And like you said, they should be checking their bags. My mom checked everything. Exactly. My mother was a teacher. Exactly. When I was in school back when I was young, like the most you had was a kid probably throwing a chair at a teacher and that was rare. Because right. I'm from Chicago, so it used to get a little raw in the classrooms. Like they would talk back, but once your parents were introduced into the scene, like parents used to come and sit in the class. Right, right. right. And now it's like nothing. Now they don't have time. Yeah, I was just about to say that it's it's the time the the society probably you know everybody's in a rush now to do this mm -hmm. to do that. They you know they're not looking at the backpacks now. They talking about going clear backpacks, see through mm -hmm. backpacks. Yeah, I've seen that. Too. Metal detectors yeah, at school stuff. and stuff like that. More police officers at school. But, like you said, they don't have time and not taking the time to search that kid. But now, uh, now as an eight-year-old, he may not know a six-year-old, but my, make my point is, and maybe you might be able to relate to this, I don't know, but sometimes if a, a young lady is getting ready to go out somewhere and her daddy sees she don't have on something appropriate, so she changes, so to speak, mm -hmm. oh. but then she got the <laughs> backup pair in mm -hmm. wherever. Mm -hmm. So if the parents are searching the backpack, to say the kid I already know you can wear it on your side or you can wear it on your way so do that parent pat the kid down before they leave or do they just go and let me make sure my weapon is secure and has a lock and it's in the lock box you know so you can kind of change a kid will find a way around it correct yeah. so searching a backpack that's a start so do I pat him down put your hands on the wall boy girl you know but that's but crazy we, that? that's, that's, we that's, shouldn't have to do that but yeah at, at six year old, at, at six, how do you have the mental capacity to even, you know, how do you have the mental capacity to to even think of pre? It was premeditated, mm -hmm. you know. what I'm saying it was mm -hmm. premeditated to take. I can understand at six, oh, I'm gonna go get some cookies out the cupboard and hide them in my room, you know. what I'm saying, or Mama told me I couldn't get no juice, so I'm gonna go take the juice and and go in the uh, bathroom and drink it. But it, it, a premeditated murder, he knew he was going to take that gun to school, and he knew he was going to shoot that teacher. Mm -hmm. That's premeditated. How? How do you hit, even have the mental capacity at six to even think about that? At six, right. I wouldn't even, mm -hmm. I mean. That's true. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. How? Yeah. What she could have, what, what is it that she could have done to him to make him want to bring the girl right. to school and talk about, I'm going to shoot this lady? Nothing. You know. Nothing, nothing. He doesn't even have the capacity to even, I, I don't, I don't. I, just, I, I think it was just uh, mad emotions. Mm -hmm. Mad because probably the teacher said something to him or, or, or and, and, and he just emotionally just, just shot the teacher. He didn't know what he was doing. Right. At six, you don't know what the hell you're doing at six years old. That, that, is, that's, that, just, that's, that blows me. It really does. Yeah, because yeah. that was premeditated mm -hmm. to me. To take a gun to school, already loaded, and know to pull the trigger and shoot somebody. You know, you know, you know if you're going to shoot somebody unless you're fearing for your life. So if a kid take a gun to school, we're saying that the parents should be held accountable, maybe with jail time and hurt someone else. I mean, the parents should be held accountable yeah. in some form or fashion. Yeah. Um, again, because that six-year-old had some kind of issue with the teacher, but he didn't know how to handle his emotions. Right. Exactly. Didn't know what to do. Um, I don't know if he felt he couldn't go to his parents or what the issue was, but he felt like that was the only solution. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's part of parenting. That definitely. Right, because the six-year-old didn't go to the store to purchase the gun, mm -hmm. or the eight-year-old or the teenager, they didn't go purchase the gun. Mm -hmm. They saw that their parents had a gun, and they figured out how to find it because we always know that kids going to find mm -hmm. it. If you're gone... Mm -hmm. Or if you were outside uh, doing whatever you do, because when we were a kid and, and a lot of our parents was under the tree, so to speak, back then sitting outside exactly. drinking beer, exactly. guess what we were doing? We were stealing the beer from out the ice chest. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. you know, in knowing it. So kids are going to find it. But it, it's the parent to have that secure and locked up. So maybe some of this will stop happening when they're under age. I, I don't even know. I think the age now is 21. I think the bar girl, I don't even know. Or 18 or something. 18? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so so anything under 18, then the parents need to be held accountable because they're not securing that weapon and locking it up. Over 18, they're going to buy the gun. 
But anything under that, we shouldn't be seeing that. They don't even make you take any type of psych test to buy drugs. No. They should. They, they should. They should. Yeah. They should. Because yeah. if you're emotionally unstable, that's it. The, like, I've, I've purchased a gun, and the, and the interesting thing about that is uh, the only thing they ask you is, do you have any felonies? And they're going to find that out anyway. <coughs> right, when they yeah. find that. So yeah. it's like, what if you don't have any felonies, but you still have violent tendencies? Mm. You know what right. I mean? Or what if you're buying a gun for a malicious intent? You can mm-hmm. always answer the question the way you want to answer it mm-hmm. on the thing. Like, there's no discernment on how to read a person when it comes to getting a gun. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And that weapon, that kid having that weapon, we say that's probably a form of disrespect for, you know, taking that gun and not having no respect for their teacher and shooting, you know, or shooting another fellow student yeah. or something like that. Or no respect in general for right. creation. You right. know what I mean? Because right. like I said, it, like, and a lot of stuff is like, okay, that child was six. It, like, that child can be on the video game. And you really lose sensitivity when it comes to just pulling the trigger like that on a video game. And then on top of that, they're playing online, so you do not know who's in front of you. Mm. I've played the game plenty of times, and there have been children on the game, and people are still cursing, yeah. saying very racist things. And yeah. it's like a little kid. It could be like a three-year-old on the game. And right. you can hear it in their voice. And it's like, why, man? You know right. what I'm saying? Like, why is the kid even on the game killing people, first off? And yeah. now you're just talking crazy from this kid here, and yeah. the, parent don't, the parent can't hear it because it's in the headphones. So you don't know, you know what I'm saying? That's like a form of schizophrenia almost. Like right. you hearing these voices, yeah. And it's like those voices are teaching your children right now, and you're not on the game. You're not. You don't know what's happening. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's that is definitely something. I have here in one of my notes here that I've on my Google search, and it's saying disrespectful behavior in children usually occur because they haven't yet learned how to solve problems or express frustration in a mature and healthy way. So that's kind of fits that kid profile right there, I guess. You know. Yeah, they don't have, like I said, they don't, they don't have the mental capacity to understand what's going on, especially with something that, that, that's serious, you know. And that's why I, I have a big issue with kids, I say from three on up to about probably 12, having cell phones. I have a big issue with that. I don't think a child should have a cell phone at least till they get in middle school. That, that That's just my take on it. Right. I agree. Because yeah. they know how to use a cell phone but can't wash dishes. They know how to use a cell phone, don't know the uh, alphabet. They know how to use a cell phone. They don't under, understand the basics of, of anything, but they can do anything on a cell phone. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not life learning. That's not life teaching. Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that I, I've gotten to so many arguments about that. Well, my child is, my child is. I said, my child need to get in contact with me. I said, I, I understand all that. That that's feasible, but if I think if your child should have a cell phone, I think she'll only be able to call in and text. Mm-hmm. What they need mm-hmm. internet for? Right. And they right. have phones like that too. It's a phone. It's a phone called Firefly, and it literally only has three buttons. It has a mom, dad, and the home. Right. Them good. only three buttons yeah. you can. It don't have no games on it or nothing. Good. Good. Yeah. We can probably agree that that parent is not going to buy that for that no. kid because yeah, exactly. it's not cool when the kid's going to be talking about it. going to be talking about it in the peer pressure. Yeah. But, you know, um, that's inevitable. Mm-hmm. We all went through it at some point in our lives. Um, kids are going to talk about kids. The point is, as a parent, you're right. supposed to teach the kids how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because life happens in all throughout life, no matter what stage from when you're young to when you're older. There are things that, that are going to happen to you, that are going to be said to you, and mm. how you react to it is going to be different, you know, based on how you grew up, how, you know, your parents taught you how to deal with things. And that's, the, I think, a, a lot of it is, you know, with that child, he wasn't taught, he mm. wasn't guided on exactly. this is how you handle things. And when some parents, like I think you said earlier, are not even realizing or seeing or thinking that, something's wrong or you can't really say anything to the parent, mm. then how do we reach them? How can we get it out there to, to stop some of this and keep, keep kids from being so disrespectful? You know, if the parent is probably not one, well, I, I'll just go back to one thing right here. Uh, I coached Little League football for probably 16 years, and I coached a lot of kids that were on the east side. And as you said earlier that a coach was in that kid life, I was in that kid life. You know, I was giving them ride to practice, from practice, 
they ate hot dogs and stuff like that after the game and stuff like that, you know. But I was in that kid life, and some of them I see today is grown men. They say, hey, coach, whatever, coach, exactly. whatever, something like that. Show me a lot of respect. Some of them hide the cigarette or, exactly. or they, whatever they smoking that behind. Respect. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm in their life. But at the same time, that parent would not bring them to practice, would not come to the game, or as soon as uh, we came home and we didn't lose, I guess y'all ass lost again, sorry mm -hmm. ass or whatever, exactly. something like that. You know? Exactly. And, and they're nowhere to support them. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I coached in the league for, I think, 12 or 13 years, then I took over the league, and I dropped the fee down to like $25 because I wanted to get as many kids in this thing as I can, exactly. as I could. Now, today, and this, I think it's probably a hundred and something per kid, but so many kids are missing out on that. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, there's nothing for a kid, a teenager to do. They can't afford to go to the Boys and Girls Club because when I grew up, we couldn't afford it, but back then the guy just kind of just let us in exactly. or whatever or something that, like that you know because we could because it's so damn expensive exactly. to go there mm -hmm. so now this kid is sitting at home he don't have jack to do but the video game or do whatever mm -hmm. you know how do we get you know the kids involved in something now, there's a couple of programs opening up in temple I, colleen may even have some i don't know but how do we get the kids to them because guess what the mama or the daddy might say i ain't taking your ass to that you know you no, you sit in there on that game and don't bug me. Well, they have to work. We're going to say that. Well, they have to work. say something positive. Right. Maybe they have yeah. to work. But I do feel like um, kids being involved in other activities, whether it's sports or something else, um, that gives them an outlet right. uh, mm -hmm. for some of that built-up frustration and the anger. Or um, if it's things going on at home, that gives them a little bit of time away from right. that where they don't have to think about it or concentrate on exactly. it so much. Exactly. But you should invest in your children. Mm -hmm. You should be invested in your children. And that's, like Paul was saying, that is the issue with a lot of parents. They're not invested in the children. It's all about them. It's all about, you know what I'm saying, go sit your ass down somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, get out of my face. Uh, right. You know, I hear a lot of that. And, and, you know, my mom and dad, they were, uh, you know, my dad was a preacher, you know what I'm saying. My mom, she worked all the time. But they were loving but sometimes, you know, they were like, man, go sit down somewhere. But they were invested in all of my brothers and sisters. They were invested. Like a lot of kids I grew up with, they were invested in their kids. Mm -hmm. and you don't see that these days. Only, And it's sad, Paul. Only, only time I see the parents in, in Temple, because I grew up, are, that are invested, uh, their kids play sports. Mm -hmm. And then Wildcat True. football. And then Wildcat True. track. And Wildcat right. basketball. Right. Then they, they want to be, after basketball season, football season over, Nothing. Nothing. I think a thing that um, I've always pushed for and I tried to get people to understand the importance of was uh, apprenticeships. I don't mm. think that people really see the importance in that anymore. And I really feel that a lot of children, if they learn their purpose early and, and they uh, get in tune with an elder who knows their purpose and, and mm -hmm. they have the same purpose, not only would the elder be able to teach them key principal things about their passions, but they'll also be able to show them shortcuts that those kids will also learn and be able to make shortcuts of and just right. become better. And people don't do that anymore. Like, I think that stuff stopped happening when they stopped having, like, shop class in mm. high schools and stuff yeah, like they that. Used to have that. They don't have that anymore? No. They don't they have metal in shop class? Yeah, no. Mac, all that. Like three or seven. Yeah. All that's gone? Yeah. 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 In Chicago, we don't have any of oh, that. Wow. Wow. She said Kareen has a career center. Colleen oh, ISD really? has a career center, so if you want to do hair or Oh, that's cool. Okay, is, okay. They have a career center that okay. the kids can, they bust them to it. Okay, because right. college ain't for everybody. Mm -hmm. right. It's not. It, college is not for everybody. So trade is just as good as a college. And mm -hmm. I hate when mm -hmm. people say, you got to go to college. No, you don't have to go to college. You can earn a trade. You can be a plumber. You can be, you can be a welder. You can do hair. You can be anything, you know, can make good money. And 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 the parents are still that, and not even parents, but people are still. You got to go to college to make it, to make it, make some of yourself. You got to play sports and all that. And I hate when people say put that in these children's heads. Yeah, that is yeah. an illusion. Definitely. Yeah, and then and then these kids are lost because they don't go to college. Right. They didn't they didn't make any football, so then they're looking down themselves like, well, I didn't make it. Now they, their self esteem is just all jacked up. True. You know, I hate when people do that to kids. Are we saying that maybe uh, maybe a teacher could 
not to put more on a teacher because some mm-hmm. teachers have a lot on them, mm-hmm. but someone to help recognize that that kid is having an issue or going through a problem. Because I believe this 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 teacher uh, that was shot uh, was already had kind of let someone know and put the word out, but maybe not to the parent, but I'll just, you know, and, and the news is only let you know what they want to know, so. But maybe not, uh, you know, maybe the teacher should, let reach out to the parent, but if the parent don't care, as we talked about, or maybe not care, or don't want to recognize or see that their kid have a problem, but I'm trying to see, my point is, if this teacher is noticing something about this kid, and the parent is not listening, who does she tell? How do we, who do, who do we notify, who does she notify that this kid is being very disrespectful in class, he's not listening, I didn't email home, I didn't told whatever, whatever, so at school, mm-hmm. um, they do have counselors on campuses. Um, right. I'm assuming that's the same at the other right. schools. But um, so if the, the teacher is reaching out to the parent and the parent isn't responding or no feedback, okay. um, they can consult a counselor or an administrator at the school to let them know um, that there's something going on. Right. I'm glad you caught on here because uh, some of this that I have no idea mm-hmm. about the counselors. And, I mean, I was in trouble a little bit in school, but never went to no counselor. And then, you know, some, as blacks, don't even believe in counselors or going mm-hmm. to counselors or, or want to talk with a counselor. But if they don't think anything, their kid is doing anything wrong. Right, it's the teacher. Yeah. It's not my kid. Yeah, it's the teacher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not my kid. Yeah. So. And it's interesting because she said counselor. and. And, 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 of course, you know, me having that background in my degree, a lot of, and I hate to say this, a lot of counselors and school administrators and, 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 and superintendents, a lot of them sit in those positions just to have it. They just sit there. Mm-hmm. They really don't do what they're supposed to do. It's just a position for them to have. I mean, everything's supposed to be documented and, 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 and put up and, and, and a paper trail. It's supposed yeah. to be a paper trail. This kid came in on here. She could told me this kid did this. This kid did that. So when the kid actually does something, they can go by their mm-hmm. paper trail and see why and what happened. But a lot of these counselors don't do that. They just sit in the office. The kid comes in. Okay, well you know what? Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, you're having a bad day. Come see me. They don't even reach out to the kids like they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. True. You know. So I mean, what use does it make to even have a counselor in school if they're not genuine? Right. You know. So it's still it's, it's still going to be an ongoing problem. Until you get somebody in there that really cares and is concerned about their child's safety and well care. And, you know, they're not supposed to be the first line of defense anyway. It should yeah. be the parent. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's just another alter- alternative. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely should be the parent first. And one thing will fall apart even more when you start to realize that we don't have neighborhoods anymore. They just mm. call them hoods. So, with that being that, it's like, I was young. My grandmother knew her neighbors from like three blocks mm-hmm. over, three mm-hmm. blocks down. People knew people like if you did something, they'd be like, "Well, I'm gonna tell your your parents or your grandmother or exactly. something like that." And it's like we don't really know the people in our communities. Mm-hmm. So if you don't really know the people in communities, then you're not gonna know what those those people are doing in terms of being able to set your kids up in a situation as to where they can link with people that like to do what they do as well. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like people are people really out here just they they the, the, their lack of caring for themselves is the, the true start of it all because they just they don't even care. It's just whatever pleases them. Everything is about instant gratification. Right. Nothing is about deep soul searching anymore. Finding mm-hmm. who you are, and if you do have a problem and you take it to some of these professionals, man, the answer typically is going to be medicine, and that's not even yeah. going to help anything either though because I used to work in a mental institution mm-hmm. and a lot of those people when they talk nobody really listened to them and some of those people I would cut their hair and I'd just be talking to them and it just they open up so much and it's like the answer isn't always medication mm. yeah. sometimes you they just need somebody to listen to them right. and I understand think them part of it with the um, with the neighbors um, with the way society is today people try to mind their own business mm-hmm. and people don't trust people anymore so Mm. um that's even with the coaches and things if the kid is younger then a parent might not trust the coach to come pick them up and drop them off like they used to true yes trust has gone has has lost in a lot of areas exactly 
they don't give themselves the opportunity to even get to really know people either, though. They so yeah. everybody is so closed off, and like you said, everybody is mm-hmm. such in a in a mode of mind their own business until something happens, and mm-hmm. you're like, well. Let's say you're minding your own business and then your neighbor's house gets broken into mm-hmm. and you don't notify nobody because you were minding your own mm-hmm. business. Now right. your neighbor's mad at you because so. you were minding your own business. <laughs> right, right. So it's like it's conflicting. And it's like it just gets to a point where it's like you have to bring the community back. Mm-hmm. Because, he, like I said, even when I was a child, like when I would go to my grandmother's house, like I knew her neighbor mm-hmm. and he would talk to me. He would show me how to fix things on cars. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if I was outside playing in the backyard and he was working on his car, I'd be like, hey, Mr. Jackson, what you doing over there? He's like, why don't you come over here and check it out? Right. And I go ask my grandma. She's like, go on here and go over there and learn something. Right. Exactly. And, and, and it's to a point, it's like, we are not open enough to even allow our children to be open enough to see situations or to understand themselves mm-hmm. or to understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is just so cut off. Mm-hmm. Totally correct. I have no idea about how to, I mean, I, I, we talked about also about how the men are not, you know, mm-hmm. available and important uh, around and in kids' life or in a child's life a little bit. So, you know, through divorce or through split up or whatever, something that a mom is raising a kid by herself. But if for some reason we can get the the village, so to speak, to go in and join in to help bring their kid, I'm just trying to think of a way to to cut down on some of the violence and disrespect of our kids. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, some parents are gonna say, "I want you talking to my kid like that, or my exactly. kid hadn't done anything." Yeah, yeah that's exactly. and, and like we that's showing a, them that's bad. and telling them, "I'm not lying to you. Your kid, his ass is over here just throwing rocks at my house yeah. a while ago." You know. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the truth. It's yeah. you, it's the truth. But like you said, you know, it's either we get to the root of the problem now, mm-hmm. or you deal with it in another situation mm-hmm. with the authorities. Right. And who wants it to get, who, who wants it to get that far or right. get it to that? Because let me tell you something, the police ain't going to play with you. Right. No. They're not going to play with you. Mm-hmm. So you can you can be bad and, and, and do whatever the hell you want to now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the parent don't have to address it. You're the one going to be paying bail money mm-hmm. and, God forbid, going to a funeral. Right. Or God forbid, you know what I'm saying, going traveling 100, 20, 120 miles, 200 miles to go to visit them in prison. That's your fault because you didn't nip it in the bud then. Mm-hmm. So like I, told, I tell my nephews, I would rather for you to come to me and tell me what's going on than for you to be out there in these streets and just totally messing up. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't talk to your daddy, which is my brothers, I say, come to me. I'm right. still your uncle. I, I still can help you. Come to me. Right. You know, call me. I will drive to Waco. I'll drive to Austin, wherever. I'll come get you. We can sit down and talk. Because as a young man, you have to learn how to maneuver in, in this world. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's sad to say. I'm not saying that to be funny, but as a young black man, it's true. you have to learn to how to maneuver in this world. It's not just white cops. Right. It's also black cops. We've just seen it. We've just it. seen it, right? We've just seen it. Right. You know? Right. So let me ask this then. Uh, so we have this one parent. I'll say she or, or he or they are really strict on their kid. So... Last night, or the, he did something in school, or she, or whatever, because I don't want nobody trying to come back, so I'll just say either or. So, and I tore that ass up last night. I whooped that ass, and back, you know, we've come up. Whatever you put back there, that's what I'm going to hit. Is you put your hands back there, I'm going to hit your hand. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now this kid goes to school, and he has a couple of whips on his leg. The teacher noticed him. He calls CPS, whatever. Now there's an investigation going on, whatever, and that kid, so that they're coming over to talk to that kid parent or whatever. Now, she's disciplining him, you know, and trying to hold him accountable for whatever he's done. So are we saying that the parent maybe was in the right because she got some whips or he got some whips on his leg? I whipped his ass. (laughs) I whipped his ass. Yes, I did. I whipped his ass. That's that's my child. I whipped his ass. And what? Right. Because you're not going to be at the funeral throwing flowers on the grave. I whipped his ass to keep from getting to that point. Yes, I did it. That's mine. So I, I, I don't care right. about them, you calling the law or whatever. He did something messed up, right. I whipped his ass. Right. But y'all know that it happens and it's going mm-hmm. on no, where sure. kids yeah. are quick to call mm-hmm. 911, my daddy, because they didn't get what they whatever they wanted, and the dad or the parent or the mom was going to 
was going to or either beat that ass. Now you got the cops knocking on the door. Mm. And I me- personally know someone that did that. Oh, you do? When I was younger. Oh, yeah, see. Mm-hmm. So, and, and it's the neighbors, too. The neighbors are called. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's weird because I didn't experience that until I came here and I just listened to people. But I've seen neighbors that just didn't like the other neighbor. So they called the child protective service, mm. and they didn't even—they weren't even doing anything to the kids. Like, it's just—it's used as a, as a weapon, right. almost like child support. Man. Right. And uh, I'm gonna touch on this note right here, kind of. So, and y'all already know I say I left my damn glasses in the car, <laughs> but so I get, when I was semi struggling over a few words, while I go <laughs> letting the camera know because I left—I could read. I just left my damn glasses in the car. I don't wear contacts. But anyway, this is one of my little old notes. It says bad, bad parenting in the U.S. Roughly 16% of children experience some form of abuse, including physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. So we talked about how the teacher saw that kid with a whip on his leg, and she let somebody know. But what happens if that kid is somebody that was at home getting sexual abuse or physical abuse or uh, you know, some type of sexual assault to him or whatever. So is that teacher maybe wrong? Or that, I won't just say teacher because I don't want to keep like I'm putting it on the teacher, but if the kid is in school, that's who's going to see it, mm-hmm. the teacher. Or, or the, if the neighbor happens to notice it, should that something that hey, we should let somebody know this kid got some whips on their leg or on their back, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can tell if a child is, a child is being abused and, and – I want to say something. It, it, I put it on my Facebook post uh, last week. Uh, in Ohio, there was this little girl, her and her father. She lived with her father. They took her away from her mother because her mother was a drug addict. And her mother had been going to uh, to prison, you know, two or three times. She got out. She couldn't take care of the child, but she got herself straight. So the little girl, her name was Amina, I think. She lived with her uh, father and her, step- her stepmom. And this child was going to school every day. And she would have webs on her and webs on her, and, and, and the teacher would call CPS, and the CPS would go investigate, and the child would say, it's nothing happening, it's nothing happening, and they would close the investigation. It went on for like a year, almost mm-hmm. two years. And every day, every t- every month, they would do the same thing. The mother got out of prison and said, something's wrong with my child, y'all not listening. CPS would always close the case. This went on for like a year and a half. So one day, the child came to school, and she was a uh, vomiting, and she was a uh, 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 she had a uh, uh, she passed out, and she had a fever. And they took her to the hospital, and she died. Mm. So CPS went and investigated. Nothing wrong. They closed the case. Only the little girl's step sisters and brothers showed the uh, uh, the CPS people the uh, the recording of how her stepmother was whipping her and beating her and, and ruptured a bowel. Mm. And this little girl, she was like nine, ruptured a bowel. And found out that she had kicked her in her stomach. Right. And then her dad was beating her with his fist. Only then did they prosecute these people. And this had been going on for years. So mm-hmm. the system failed this child. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think, that's why people get so, are so uh, uh, apprehensive about, you know, going to the CPS or going to somebody because they think it, it, nothing's going to happen or they think, it's, it, you know, something is wrong. So, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I yeah. do think that the teacher should always report it. Right. They should always report it because you never know. Yeah. So. No matter what, so you can start an investigation on it. Right. Yeah. yeah, at least start a paper trail. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. But then, uh, like we said, then you have that one parent when the CPS coming over there because mm-hmm. they investigate, you already know how that can kind of go. <laughs> you better but not say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing wrong with you. Yeah, right. yeah. And that's yeah. what, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It's like their discernment is so weird, though, because it's like, it, what happens when protective services come over there and they find out the child needs to be whipped? Mm-hmm. They mm. still going to take them, but at the same time, it's like, you could be putting them in an even worse situation. Not not every household that you put that child in is going to be a good household for that exactly. child. Exactly. They could go to a household where they're going to get something worse done to them or molested or something like that. Yeah. So there's cases like that. So it's kind of like they don't really view child but like i say like every child doesn't need to be disciplined the same right. mm-hmm. you know what i mean like some people just take the easy way out and just go 
the children. Some kids just really need to be talked to and understood. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? It's a lot of that stuff stems from them not even being listened to. They, you know what I'm saying? So then they have to show out because they feel like there's no other way to be seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some teachers are good at um, at noticing, you know, if this child is getting in trouble, it's because of this. Because sometimes they say the kids are really, really smart mm-hmm. and they get bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they've shown that some kids are natural leaders. Um, even though they were acting out, but if they put them in chess or they put them on a debate team, mm-hmm. they shine. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I agree. Not every child needs a spanking. If I had a choice, I could, I would take punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who was doing the spanking. Right. But, right. Um, right. Right. But I do feel like um, you have to take time, and I know we're all busy, but you have to pay attention to your kids and and talk to them and make sure that they, you know what's going on and make sure you understand um, and make sure they understand how much you care about them and how that you'll love them no matter what and um, just teach them how to handle things in life. A lot of people actually forget how to, they forget what it was like to even be a child. I think a lot of those problems stem from that too though right. because even as children well, we wanted to be heard but at the same time a lot of our parents they always fell for the same situation to where they thought that we didn't, we knew less than what they thought we knew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like the kids always know more because your kids are not just being taught by you. They're being taught by society. When your kids go to school, mm-hmm. other kids are going to tell them things. Mm-hmm. They're going to hear other things. And it's yeah. like, it's just foolish yeah. for you to think like, oh, my child doesn't, like for instance, like a lot of people think their children don't know about sex. Kids going to talk about that kind of stuff at school mm-hmm. because oh, you yeah. don't know what they're hearing in their household. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. You know what I mean? So you can never <laughs> underestimate what you what your children will know, and that's yeah. why it's very important for you to talk to them about everything. Mm-hmm. Right, and just to touch on that right there, my kids coming up, I told my kid, look, I don't care if y'all cuss. You can cuss that kid out on that bus. You can call him a bald head mother, this or that or whatever, because I did as a kid, mm-hmm. but I did tell them, don't do it in front of grownups. Mm. Because just like you said, that other kid over there is cussing them out mm-hmm. or whatever, and they, they didn't hear any cussing going on in my house or whatever. But guess what? Kids are going to pick it up because they're going to hear that other kid said or that other whatever parent said or something like that. So I used to let mine cuss their ass off and coming up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as long as they didn't do it in front of, they have respect to not do it in front of, you know, grown ups because mm-hmm. they're going to do it. Yeah, you your know. coaches cuss at you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You, know. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. We have to find a way to try to reach the kids and maybe get the parents a little bit more involved, especially around weaponry. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to just say guns, even that's the more popular. But, you know, we have talked about already about holding a parent accountable if the kid is, you know, underage because he didn't go purchase that gun. So, you know, it's just a discussion that we're having here, and who knows if there'll be an end. We hope for it to get better. But mm-hmm. sometimes it seems like it's getting a little worse. But just because this is definitely a, an attack on, on masculinity, but hmm. there's a confusion between loving masculinity and toxic masculinity. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like when you look at it, I think a lot of people think that toxic masculinity can only come from men. But, yeah. hmm. you know, the feminine energy, we all hold both spectrums. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like people don't, they don't understand it. Right. And a lot of people are not put in a position to understand loving masculinity to be a safe place. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. think only a mother can provide a loving environment. And it's like, as I was coming up, even though my father was present, my mother was a teacher, so she always put me in like male mentoring programs. She put me in like Boy Scouts and right. any any male teacher that she seen that I was um, drawn towards mm-hmm. that in school, she would always put me in an environment where I would be around them because she would get to know them and, and just, you know what I'm saying? like. So it's like people don't really see those type of things anymore to want to do it because we feel like we live in such a fast-paced society. But the thing about that is, is that we make time for the things that we want. Mm-hmm. And right. We don't. A lot of us don't see our children's um, mental state as important because we just see them as children. We don't see them as future adults. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was perfectly said. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh. We're approaching our little end point, so if anyone has, uh, like, a, I guess, like a closing argument mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that, you want to just go ahead and say, uh, before I go on and close this on out, uh, go ahead and take it away. If anybody just have something to, to just
just you want to get off your chest right now before we end this discussion of disrespectful kids and parents not being held accountable? Mm, I think uh, we definitely should take more time to show our children that we not only love them, but we actually acknowledge them and that we understand what it's like to be a child because people are more receptive to the lessons that you have to teach when they see that you understand who they are fundamentally. Invest in your children. Invest in everything that they do to make them become adults and, and, and part of a, a, you know, a healthy lifestyle and, 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 and productive adults. You know, Invest in your children. Don't yeah. shun them away. Invest in your children. I agree with and love absolutely everything that both of you just said. Um, for me, um, t just take the time. Um, I know we're all busy, um, but just take the time to listen and just to be present. And I'd just like to add on that um, to who's ever watching, wherever you may be, whatever state, country you may be in, try to reach out because I know in Temple, Texas, there's some programs for kids that uh, – that's free because they rely on donations. So you as a parent, don't let money be the reason why you can't get your kid over to this program because there's some programs that I know in Temple, like it may be some right here in Colleen where we're recording it or wherever you may be, but you have to reach out as a parent to take that responsibility and try to find those organizations, those programmers. And sometimes even if you don't have or you, you can't get that kid over there, work with that coordinator. I'm be, I'm almost certain they'll be glad to go on and come pick them up because I picked up so many kids. I've had them stacked in my car like pancakes before mm -hmm. without a seatbelt. <laughs> but uh, so I encourage parents to just reach out to, uh, you know, to other organizations and programs. Let's try to get some help for our kids and, and, and show some love for them. I'm not saying they don't, but let's get them in those programs, those organizations. So well, that we're going, and I'm going to like to thank all my guests for coming out, you know, and, Showing some love and appreciating it for this discussion, you know, from uh, Jazz coming, we came all the way from California for this uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> for this topic. I think you know, I'm just playing, whatever. But uh, you know, really appreciate you guys coming on. So, with all that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I am Paul Wizzo. If you'd like to hear about another topic, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. Uh, something like to be on the show, hit me up in the comments, and we'll make it happen. And until then, I am Paul Wizzo. I'll let you boy. We still recording until they come and push the button. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>